Okay, so this is the electric light, which was in even in old times big inspiration. And so we were debugging it with my friend, and uh, we found out how it is done. And it's basically uh, in this playlist uh, there are used uh, two. Uh, basically, each line is from different picture of the road. One is with stripe and one is without stripe. So here is from one picture, then there's, there is few lines from another picture, few lines from one picture, few lines from another picture, and you, the, the hardware scrolling horizontal is used for the turns. So drawing screen like this is basically 100, 200 uh, changes of memory and nothing more. Of course, the game does a lot more because it creates uh, objects using PNG, but the road rendering itself is very simple. And uh, there is a lot of games like this, especially on Atari or on Sega computers, which have Sega consoles, which have hardware resizing. Uh, so this kind of drawing road, which is not really 3D, but it's not really any kind of 2D there, there is a lot of uh, 3D computation done. Uh, let's call it pseudo 3D, and it's just what, I'm, I, what I want to talk about. So I have a few slides and some examples and project uh, written in Visual Basic, which will demonstrate some of the problems. So, Basically, each of these algorithms has some of these features. Uh, typically, not all of them. Uh, we will look later at some games and analyze how they are doing it and where they are cutting corners because not all computers have all the features like Atari. And Atari, has, Atari again has some different problems. Uh, but the major feature is slicing the road per lines and drawing it line by line. On Atari you can use hardware for that, but you can use the same system on, let's say, Spectrum and do it by CPU. And there is another problem of Z deformation proper, which is basically the fact that the stripes closer to the screen are longer and how they're getting far away, they are shorter and shorter. And it basically, in reality, is a formula which uses division, which you can do as fast on 8-bit computers, so you have to solve it somehow. Typically, there is, it can be easily done with tables, but I will show you how. Then, then you have to solve turns somehow. A lot of games uh, like this have these turns really weird, and you can see that it's not correct. I will at least tell you what it means to be correct, geometrically, how it looks. Uh, I can't tell how all the games are doing it because honestly, I don't know. I tried to make something simpler, which would look similar, like one of those games, for example, uh, Electra Glide, really the turns are kind of, they are not, you can see the turn from far away, getting to what you, it mostly looks like the road just flicks to the left, flicks to the right, and the curve is quite strange. So at least I will show you what, it, how it should be pro made correctly, and also how it actually can be done on a bits quite easily. Another feature is hills. Uh, that complicates the problem a lot. It's about two times more complex, but a lot of games, especially on Spectrum, uh, had this solved, and especially later on 16-bit computers, it was just norm. You couldn't have road without hells, it was just too bad. Uh, another thing is positioning of the camera. Some games have the road, I will have pictures later, just the camera is always in the center of the road, and the road is typically from left corner of the screen, from right corner of the screen, 
and the camera itself is moving. The, the player car is moving left to right, and the road is always same. It can turn, but the bottom of the screen is always the same. A lot of games works like this. Not electric -like light, which is of course first-person view. So there is position on the road. The camera can be on the left side of the road, on the right side of the road, and there is very specific kind of deformation which has to be solved if you want a camera like that. And the last feature is changing of heading of the camera, that the camera can look left and right. And honestly, I don't know about any game on 8 bits, on 16 bits, which does it. Even if it's not really hard, and my intro for flop does it. And it can be especially uh, useful in first person game, uh, but even Electra Glide, which is first person, doesn't really turn the camera left and right. It just moves you on the left side, from left side to right side, but the camera itself doesn't like look left, look right. It can do it. I will show you again how it looks. And so, here's just simple demonstration how the road is basically divided into the slices. Again, uh, on Atari it can be done easily with hardware because we have display list and horizontal scrolling which can be different on each line. Uh, on systems which do it with uh, software, it typically means that they have uh, pre-scrolled variants of the road and they just select a uh, block of memory which they have to copy, but the principle is all the same. Also, a lot of games doesn't solve this problem for each micro line, but for each character line. So you, they can use, for example, on C64, a lot of games use clearly uh, character modes, and it's done per character. Even on Spectrum, Chase HQ, one of the best looking road on 8 bits, clearly is aligned to 8 pixel blocks. So they had some reason uh, to do it like that. So it doesn't have to always be micro lines if you do it per eight or depends how good you want it to have and how fast can you make it. So there is always some compromise that to be to, to be made. Uh, absolutely invisible. So here is a demonstration of the problem of the correct Z deformation. It mainly applies to the stripes on the road. If I show my intro to flop. You can see that the first stripe is like 12 pixel long and the stripes which are far away are very short and it's basically because if you project your scene which is here to the screen which is at some constant distance from the camera uh, if you take constant uh, interval on the screen, basically the one micro line, it will project as you get far away, it just covers more and more space. So if the stripe is this long, here it will take two pixels, but here it will not be even one pixel. And the formula which uh, basically uh, computes the distance of the road which you see at each individual uh, vertical slice is basically something like this and there is division where this is the number of the micro line uh, here the z is distance in the wall y is height of the camera above the road and the s 
uh, suffix means in screen space. So ZS is distance of camera from the screen and YS is your coordinate on the screen. So basically you have to have on a bit computer or even on 6 bit computer typically table which will for each micro line and let's say on Atari you have 100 of them because the typical resolution is 200 lines and let's say about one half of that is row. Uh, so you need at least table which will for each micro line tell you the distance from the camera. But that's basically only table which you need. Everything else can be somehow computed from this number. So let's say you have this in table. It's static, it doesn't need to change. We will later show that even if you use hills, you don't have to change these values at all. Uh, so. You have solved this problem, and the next problem is the turns. Uh, the correct way, uh, when I was first doing it, I used some really complex 3D formulas for the proper transformation, and first it had a lot of numeric, numerical errors, and then it was basically impossible to do on a bit computer. But later I got a great idea, and it comes from the major feature of perspective transformation and that is that all parallel lines meet at one point on horizon, if I say all parallel lines in the flat uh, plane, thank you. <laughs> uh, so in the perspective transformation they will all meet in one point on horizon. And basically, if they are parallel with the point, with the direction I'm looking, they will all meet exactly in the... They will meet exactly in the middle of the screen. And if they are, let's say, 15 degrees uh, to uh, the direction I'm looking, they will simply meet at different point and uh, let's say my field of view is 90 degrees, 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees to the right, which is very commonly used system for a bit computers because it means the just the x, x and y coordinates are always the same, so you don't have to use any multiplication for that, and it's very common in games like this. Uh, uh, in uh, view this wide, you can just assume that uh, all lines which are which have 45 degrees to the direction I'm looking will simply meet in this point. Here are lines about 22 degrees. Here are lines which are looking which are parallel with the direction I'm looking. So basically, for each angle, you can say where the point is, which will, where the lines will meet. And the distribution of the points, uh, you can simplify that it's simply linear. So basically, if I'm drawing the line, and I keep the road as table of directions, so I can say, okay, camera is looking in direction 0 degrees, the road here starts in direction 0 degrees, so the lines should go to the middle of the screen, and here the road turns left 15 degrees, so the lines should lead toward point which is 45 divided by 15, let's say one third to the left. So basically the angle of the road tells me x coordinate of the point of the horizon to which the road should be pointing. Uh, even so it leads to one division but I don't want to show here exactly how it can be easily done in, in, in digital numbers because it's kind of more complex and only few people would understand. 
I can show you later just if you are interested. But basically, it's really simple to imagine how it should look, and then you, and every time you have like easy understanding of the problem, it's much easier to find some easy integer solution. So basically, you just take the angle from the road, uh, subtract uh, angle of the camera, find the point on the horizon, which is basically one to one, and then you speed the road toward that direction, and that's all. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of games doesn't do it like this and have some weird methods, but maybe they just didn't realize or they had some other reasons. Uh, this leads me to another, I already talked about it a little, but I didn't create a special sheet. Uh, and that's the representation of the road. Typically, in scene like this, you don't have anything like 3D model, everything is just in polar coordinates, you have road. Road is represented just like list of directions. You, the, the road consists of segments which are of constant length. You can choose whatever length it can be, and then you just add angles. Uh, of course, if you are right, uh, drawing the road like this, you can theoretically do loops and things like that, but engine like this will never draw loop or eight or 90 degrees uh, and uh, turn. It will always be just slight turns. Uh, I found out that 45 degree turns are generally okay, but not much more than that. So, But for racing tracks, you can have much more speed curves, so it's no problem at all. Uh, another slide I have here is the hills. Basically, uh, you can... The hills are typically drawn that the slices which you are drawing are not always one pixel in height, but some are higher or lower. Again, you can use a similar method to uh, find to which point the road should lead to because basically okay all flat surfaces if you have road which is on flat surface it will go to this point and if from here it starts raising up 15 degrees there will be just some another point around here and the road should go to that uh, point so basically the map to where you want to go is completely the same, but you have to use. Uh, I will show you. I have interactive example which shows it a bit better. But basically, uh, some of the z values you use, you just uh, shift it a little, a bit up or down, and you can create the illusion of hills like this. Uh, you can also look at it that the slices are like pieces of paper laid behind each other and you are looking uh, at the stack of papers from top and you are just taking some of the papers and moving them up or down and uh, you just have to solve. Typically this road is drawn from bottom up because you start at some let's say, centered position and then the road turns. So it's, you start here and then based on, on the turns you turn left or right. And with the hills the same, you just have to uh, prevent the roads to be drawn like below the horizon. So if you are already at coordinate 20 and the next segment can even uh, look that it's below horizon, you just have to realize, ah, I see it below the coordinates, I was at 20, now I'm at 19, so I will not draw this segment, draw this segment, and I will show it. It's basically all slides, because now I have to switch to my interactive example. It looks like this. I will lower the resolution a bit. So basically, this is not a matari, it's just for demonstration. Uh, it shows 
the road aiming to some point on horizon. It uh, shows how the uh, stripes are shorter and shorter because it uses the uh, formula to compute the correct Z coordinate. Basically, for each line, you compute the Z, Z distance from the camera, and then you just have to compute if the stripe or the side stripe, what color it should be at this Z coordinate. Typically, you use some bit of this coordinate, let's say second bit, third bit, and it will simply create the stripes. Uh, here, um, the two shades of green indicates segments of how the road is represented in memory. So you will see that the turn here starts about here, about here, because this is the uh, border of the segment, and so there are two uh, straight segments, and the other segment uh, slowly change its angle to the right. And this is the basic system where the camera is fixed to the road. There is always center of road is always here. It never moves. Camera always follows it. A lot of games works like this, and the player is sprite which moves left to right, and there is no deformation. When the player is going to left or right, the road stays the same. That's kind of simple, but for example, Electra Glide and a lot of more advanced games do something different. Basically, the camera looks like moves like this. Uh, so this is the X coordinate of the camera, and basically it means that you are not starting. Uh, generally, the algorithm uh, works with it computes coordinates of the center line and the left and right is just subtracted from that uh, based on how wide the road should be. Uh, so you just compute one sequence of coordinates like this and if the road is centered and striped it's just center of the screen and nothing else. But if you move it to left and right it still doesn't change the fact that all the lines should meet in the same point. So if there is center of the screen, if you are moving left to right, all the lines still aim for the center of the screen, you just start a different coordinate. So let's say my X coordinate is one fourth of the width of the road. So I just start one fourth on the left side and I, because the direction of the road didn't change, I still aim for the same point on the horizon. So it's really simple modification of the algorithm to uh, allow things like this. I will also show you the system, how it keeps aiming to the same direction. I just changed that the turns are sharp and not uh, smooth. And you can see that the road, when it's far from you, it has to turn much steeper to aim to the same point, but as you get closer, the on the screen this angle is getting shallower. And it's really important, so it looks like this because now it looks really almost like it was matte texture, but it's still just the same slices. You can see that the sides are perfectly same. It's just one slice shift to the left, nothing more, but it looks really good. And I don't know about any other game which would do it as good like this. So this kind is <coughs> really interesting. And I can turn it again to smooth curves which you typically want. There are also some uh, with roll like this. There are also some uh, numerical errors. Uh, I won't go into details. Basically, I can say smooth road is much better for rendering because it removes some of the numerical errors uh, compared to the case where you have really sharp changes of directions. 
and when I show demonstration of the hills, I will improve the resolution even this notebook is quite slow and can do it fast enough. And here you can see basically some of the lines are simply double. Basically if you draw the lines you can look at it that each line have like y coordinate and with next line you just say y coordinate is y coordinate plus one. And if you are doing uh, hills it's just not plus one, it's plus 1.1 or 1.2 and sooner or later it will just jump two lines or more. I see that the lines are the hills are not very pronounced, but here you can see that if I go back, it creates like the hit the road goes behind the horizon. And if I move a bit faster, you will see that they indeed are nice hills. Even if I, I, I can just for the heck of it increase the hills a bit. another one of the problems which occurs in this mode. As I said, you are simply just drawing these slices and some of the slices are taller. And you can see that the road no longer goes diagonally but there are big ugly steps. And only way how to solve it is that basically you insert more papers. So to draw 100 lines you use for example 400 Z values. Not all will uh, result in rendering line. You will just add the values and realize, okay, I, I'm not far enough. I will show you how you can increase number of these slices and it basically it solves the problem. This is 100 lines or like for each pixel, one line. So it's really coarse and it looks really bad. And if you use more the bigger table for the Z values, it's better. But if the hills are not so steep, you basically just need uh, twice as much values or four times. It's not really a problem. It's still quite a small table. And the uh, overhead is not big because you are basically just adding two numbers to process the line. Some work always has to be done in the moment you realize you have to use the line and draw it, but you don't do this anymore than in normal case. Something else. Oh, it's okay. And there's one more thing I wanted to show, and that's. Uh, This, as we were talking about turning the camera, I have mode for that. Mm, can see. Like this. Here I can turn to left and right, and basically I'm still in the middle of the road, but I'm turning left and right, and it's again I'm just turning the camera. Just means that. Uh, Lines with direction zero degrees just go to a different point. So basically, it's one addition in the beginning of the algorithm. It's perfectly cheap, and now it looks especially good if I use the steep curves. It almost looks like three 3D textures. It's just perfect deformation. No problems. There is small jerk when I 
step over the segment. That's one of the numerical errors I was talking about, but it's really too complex to explain. And it doesn't happen with smooth roads. So uh, this is most of the games uh, with this kind of roads have really simplified physics and basically it mostly works like this. You are just moving straight and if you are go if you enter left turn the car will slowly move to the right and you have to keep joystick to the left to keep it on the road and nothing more. You can do things like cutting corners and going to the opposite side uh, of the road to uh, get through the uh, turn faster and so it's not you can't apply things you do in a real racing car uh, but if you use throw like this you could because really you can just cut corner absolutely with no problem so this is basically the state I wanted to get it in because it would, it would allow me to render out uh, for like more modern type of racing game and the underlying system is still the same just the math is slightly different but still perfectly in reach on, of a bit computer I will now show some games some videos just few from different computers and then I will talk a bit about the intro for the flop which has some specific uh, problems I miss perfect so I already talked about electric light very sure you can look at it again uh, you can see that it's very fast that it doesn't have road in the center the camera moves left and right on the road but doesn't turn left and right you can see that the camera is always looking toward the direction of the road that there are no hills uh, until recently uh, when Fandal ported game from BBC One the Jaguar E or I don't know exactly the name E type yeah uh, there wasn't game or at least I didn't know, I don't know about game older than this which had the hills on Atari but on Spectrum it was pretty normal even back in the day but uh, Electra is generally simple road but very really, really fast no no other computer has full frame, full frame rate though, as far as I know. Another game on Atari is Pole Position, which have basically the road very similar to Electra Glide. It's not so pretty, it's not so fast, but it has basically the same features. The road moves left and right, the stripes in the middle are not perfectly correct. They are somewhat weird, but you can really tell, and there is some sense of speed, not as good as in an Electra. But here you can see one of the big problems with games like this on Atari. Atari has really bad sprites for cars. And if you want to use hardware for driving cars, and you have to, if you want the game to be fast, you either end up with ugly road and you use graphic for cars and you have or you have nice road and you use uh, PNG for cars and then in that case you have ugly cars so every guy on Atari had to somehow choose and pole position choose ugly cars choose so uh, now I want to show uh, Chase HV from Spectrum which of course doesn't have any hardware option for anything. Everything is like but in CPU, but it's relatively fast. It's about 10 frames per second. It has hills. It has really nice road with many planes. It has nice objects. But if you look uh, good, you can see that, for example, the middle car stays in middle. So it doesn't have to be shifted left and right. You just have one sprite and you don't have to shift it and or scroll the plates. Same with all objects. 
and other cards, they are aligned to 8 pixels. So you don't have to screw it, you just copy the bytes. And even the road, these segments are not on any coordinate, but everything is multiply multiplication of 8. It has some basic girls and generally the algorithm to computing the shifts and the hills I think is very similar to what I use but they had to use some different methods to render the final slices and anyway it looks really good there is no game looking this good on Atari uh, there is also another approach which can be seen, for example, on Autron games on C64, which on the first glance looks like it does the same thing. You have road, you have stripes, the road turns, but this has no matter how old. It's basically made a drone by hand, because the road only has few phases, if you look, oh, this is segment with hills, which is not really good for that. But you can see that if the road turns to the right, and there are just three phases before it goes to strike the road. And that is the road, the turn is not incoming toward you. It's basically just seven shapes of the road, and that's it. Everything else is just animating objects along these lines. And there is time, some similar system to drawing the hills. But if you look as the car moves to the left and right, the road stays the same, it doesn't change shape at all. It's just bitmap moving left and right. So basically, a game like this doesn't use any sophisticated math at all. It's just few animations and objects moving along predefined trajectories and everything just moves left and right on the other hand it looks quite okay I think of course uh, Commodore then can use their sprites to great effect uh, similar but I think even slightly better looking is Outrun Europe but it's the same agent for the road I think it looks basically the same they just have more objects around and it's a lot faster. Also, some of these games, the animation of stripes coming to you is done each frame, while the animation of the road changing shape is not done every frame. Uh, if you use, you can use color cycling or sprites for the stripes, and then basically you can fake it like this, that you can create the sense of speed by animating the stripes, which is cheap, and then the complicated math to modify the shape of the road can be done like each four frames or things like that. It's, I think it's a good compromise if you can do it like it's not too visible. Here it's quite okay, I think. It's not, here it's not like that the math is complicated because there is no math, I, at least I think. But the road has really just a few shapes And it's very simple, but it looks okay. And I, I also want to show Groove from Atari ST. It's also on Amiga, it looks basically the same, which is one of the best implementation of these algorithms. Again, it doesn't have different uh, directions of the camera. It just uh, moves the car left and right on the road but you have pretty nice hills, really lot of detail. Of course, it's 16-bit computer, so it has more power to spare. And clearly, this is uh, Atari ST, which doesn't have any hardware to move the slices, unlike Amiga, which could have used it, but maybe it didn't, because on Amiga, it looked basically perfectly the same. Same frame rate, same resolution. Here the game is also interesting because uh, provided a bit. If you go around the
uh, final spray, there are some real 3D objects like this. Those are objects from real 3D polygons, and it's combined with this pseudo 3D road, and it looks really good. It's of course something totally out of reach of 8-bit computers, but it should be nice that they combine the new modern way of 3D graphics with the old one. And now I will tell something about the intro for the flop. So basically I wanted to, one, one way, one thing I wanted to test was uh, moving the math, the mathematic formulas for the road on a bit computer, make it fast enough, use it integers only, things like that. Uh, but another problem is how to draw the road and how to draw the car. And uh, not this. I wanted some nice car, and on Atari you can't really use PNG for nice car. So the idea here was to create the road using PNG and uh, to have the car in graphics. And that's exactly what I did. If I use this very nice feature of Altera, you can see that the road is this. Each color is different uh, player object. From the left side, from the right side is uh, missile, all extended to maximum size. And the fourth object is used for the stripes in the middle and this leaves me with rule like this I can use graphics for the car and it just everything is done in hardware there is no collision I can do second car like this I can't add any details on the road because I use everything so it's not really good for a game but it's good for intro here are some sprites used just for adding colors and also the license plate of the car is one remaining missile which wasn't used for anything yet and so basically uh, from here to here there is huge uh, kernel routine which just waits for the uh, beam and changes coordinates of the players here in the first third is simple because it's just one player and one missile and second player for the middle stripes but here it's already uh, five coordinates and here it's seven coordinates basically you can do this much changes between lines on Atari so the coordinates for left and right uh, side of the screen are done are not done in the same line so on all the lines you have left side of the road and on the even uh, lines I said the right side of the road which leads to some errors you can see here in the middle sometimes you can see some pixels and you can but in the end they are all same colors so it doesn't matter it looks nice and as I said it frees me to use graphics in this part just for the car it's just the car has seven uh, phases, so there are seven uh, pieces of video memory which I just switch, whichever I need. I use hardware scrolling to move the car left and right. I even use uh, 16 uh, shades of green screen mode in this small part because the road is in PNG and it doesn't care about resolution of the graphics at all. So basically it was, I wanted to test if it is possible to create road using PNG and car in graphics and I can say it is possible but there is so many problems that basically you, you can't make a game like this unfortunately. Uh, I even had some different approach which used all players and all missiles for the road but it, I couldn't make, there was just some 
stop ringing. There are just some problems and I have to make it a bit simpler. So basically, I didn't want to make a game. I just wanted to test the math and test approach like this. And now I can safely say that you can't make a game like this. If I wanted to make a game on Atari racing game with many other cars, I would just render everything in software. I would try to make it as fast as possible using some advanced technique like tables and extended memory and things like that. But really, the combination, you can't use PNG for cars and it's really problematic to use it for road too. So, anyway, I'm happy because I at least could use the results of the experiments for something. At least now it's intro for flop and it's nice. But don't expect a game like this anytime soon, sorry. <laughs> so now if you have some questions, you can ask in chat. No problem. No questions. Question? Question? Yeah, I heard. Yeah, we will talk later yeah, in that okay. case. Yeah, I found other solutions, but many of them are quite similar. It's yeah, similar. okay, great. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one, can you think of some computer with a better graphic resolution? Uh, one again, please. Hey. In case we use uh, mm -hmm. computer with a better graphic resolution, can we use this algorithm for uh, uh, perfectly, uh, basically, yes. Uh, uh, the is test of mine. First, resolution really doesn't matter. You can use uh, full HD resolution, you know, they'll work perfectly the same. As long as you are drawing uh, the road line by line. This is 160 per 100. This is uh, 320 uh, by 200 and this is 640 by 400 so you can see that the math is still the same, doesn't care but since you are drawing the road line by line it's easy to add some texture uh, interpolation or resize if you look on games on Sega especially which has hardware for hardware resizing of patterns, they always have uh, textured road and basically they use the same algorithms for the math. Just drawing the slice doesn't... On Atari it means, okay, I need 80 pixel road, which is on this address and I, I will have to move it to video RAM and it's done. And on Sega it means, I want this texture, I want this micro line of this texture and I want the texture to have stretch to this width and the hardware will do it. But basically, if you look on Outram, on Sega, basically on any video, it is, you will see that they have simple textures on the road and it's no problem. I tried it in this demo, but I didn't have any nice texture and I removed it because it just didn't look good. But the math is really ready for it. You just have to add the linear resizer in one direction and it's all. And the second one? Uh, basically I can. No, no problem. I even can release the code for this demo which is in Visual Basic and I think it's a li little more readable. Because it's like, okay, some math but the assembler code for the road, it's just black magic. It's just one table, one table, add together, third table, put it into code, put it into some code which will be run uh, half frame later, so it's really nothing which anyone could understand, I'm afraid. <laughs> but the visual basic is very readable, I think. There is also one page on the internet which uh, uh, doesn't bring anything new to this, but explains it in great detail and with some animations. It's not done by me, but I found it like two years ago, and it was also one of the inspiration 
like to get into this program and create something so I can uh, provide the others. Basically, if you enter pseudo 3D road into Google, you will find the page. So, but I will show you, uh, you can find me later. Any other questions? So, that will be all. I thank you for listening and if there are some questions maybe you are too shy to ask, <laughs> you can come to me and I will show you, or if you want to see the nasty details, no problem. And thank you very much. <laughs>